Hello, in continuation to my first talk about how to configure the ATP server on a Cisco router, in this presentation I'll show you how to configure a DHCP server on a Cisco router, which might be remote to the LAN where DHCP clients are connected. For example, in this case, instead of configuring the DHCP server on RT1, the router which is directly connected to LANs where DHCP clients are residing, I'm going to configure the DHCP server on RT2. So we're going to see how this work in case where the DHCP server is not directly connected to the LAN with requesting the DHCP clients. So the first thing I do here is very simple. I just go to RT2 and on RT2 I'm going to configure the DHCP server exactly as if I, uh, the way I've done in my first in my previous presentation. So the first thing I will do here, I will show the running configuration and see that all IP addresses, routing protocol are configured. Now I'm going to start configuring the DHCP pools of IP addresses. So the first thing I will do, I will create a pool for network 172.16.0. I call it 172.16.0-pool. And then here I will specify the network which is to be assigned, whose IP addresses will be assigned dynamically. It should be network 172.16.0.0 with uh, subnet mask 255.255.255.0. The default gateway will be 172.16.0.254. Um, we can also include something like uh, exclude some IP address from dynamically uh, from dynamic assignment IP DHCP excluded and I will put the IP address 172.16.0.254 this is the IP address of the default gateway now I will create the pool DHCP pool for the second LAN now this DHCP pool I call it 172.31 sorry .0 pool now inside I will specify the subnet address 172.31.0.0 with a subnet mask and the default router or default gateway 172.31.0.254 of course we have to make sure that the IP address of default gateway is not part of the pool of IP address that will be dynamically assigned by this DHCP server to DHCP client so uh, it will be IP DHCP excluded and I put the IP address of the D8 of the default gateway 254 254. Let's go back to the running configuration and see if everything is okay. So these are the excluded IP addresses and these are the two pools of IP addresses and network parameters to be dynamically assigned to DHCP client which are resided which are resided on these two networks. After that, let's just go to host one. Let me go to host one and go to desktop IP configuration. Let's see what happens if I check this, if I put a check of radio button DHCP. Now, host one is trying to get, it does not have any network parameters, so it's trying to get uh, IP address, but it does not succeed, it fails. So the success, uh, it does not succeed, so the trial here, or the request fails. What happens with the, net, with the host three on the second land? So the same story maybe. I go to desktop, open the IP configuration, select DHCP. Now the host is requesting IP address from the DHCP server and nothing works. All right, so let me just bring back this to static. Same thing with host one. I bring the uh, configuration to static configuration. What is missing in fact is that on RT1, I have to add another keyword or command. So first I should go to the uh, interface faucet in a zero slash zero interface. This is the interface which is connected directly to the LAN where DHCP client are residing. And I will use the command IP helper address. And here I have to specify the IP address of the server, of the DHCP server. What is the IP address of the DHCP server? 192.168.0.2. So let's put this IP address 192.168.0.2. Right, I do the same thing with the second fast Ethernet interface. Right, now go back to the running configuration and see. 
how this command is included, right? It's included fine, it's, it's there. Now let's go back to host one and change this from static to DHCP. You see now the host one succeeded in obtaining network parameters dynamically from the DHCP server. Let's go to host two and, uh, and configure it with network parameters from the DHCP server. Does it succeed? Yeah, the operation is success. Uh, host three, the same thing. Let's try to obtain dynamic IP addresses. It works, right? And finally, host four. Uh, we test host four and see if, yeah, it works. So the operation is success. What happened in fact? In fact, the HCP client, when it requests IP address from a DHCP server, it's going to broadcast this request. And the request is broadcast to limited broadcast address, which is 255.255.255.255. Okay? So remember, 255.255.255.255. This is the destination IP address to which the request sent from the DHCP client would be sent. Of course, the purpose of this request is to find is if there is any DHCP server and this packet is referred to as DHCP discover discover so here the DHCP request sorry the DHCP client is trying to discover a DHCP server and the discovery here is based on broadcast so it's going to send the packet to this destination IP address which is referred to as limited broadcast limited broadcast address we know that routers do not allow limited broadcast address or packets destined to limited broadcast address to be forwarded. In fact, a router will be a barrier or it will simply stop all packets with this kind or with this destination IP address. So the packet will not be forwarded. So what we'll do, we're going to configure an option that allows the Cisco router to forward any broadcast packet to a specific destination IP address and, and in fact this is what happens so this command means that all packets destined to this destination IP address will be simply forwarded to this IP address 192.168.0.2 same story from the second LAN the DHCP clients like host 3 and host 4 will be broadcasting a DHCP discover packet to this destination IP address 255.255.255.255. The router receives this on the Farset zero slash one interface and then is going to forward this broadcast to this destination IP address 192.168.0.2 which happens to be the router where the DHCP server is running. So when the router receives the DHCP discover so it's going to send a DHCP over. DHCP, DHCP offer packet offering an IP address from the pool of IP addresses which are available right so like this the DHCP client will receive the offer and then it's going to generate it it will reply back with a request request DHCP request packet say yes I am requesting your offered IP address and finally the DHCP server will send another packet DHCP acknowledgement saying the offered IP address is yours now you take it and use it for your communication so in fact any DHCP client needs four DHCP packets to be exchanged between it and the DHCP server in order to acquire an IP address dynamically or let's say a set of network parameters dynamically those DHCP packets are discover offer request and acknowledgement and communication is based on the uh, on the broadcast address of course, here you say, well, since the host does not have uh, IP address, how can the DHCP server send the DHCP offer to the host? In fact, here it's relying on MAC address. So much of the communication here is based on MAC address because MAC address is specific to every computer and it cannot change. At this time, no IP address is already assigned to a DHCP client. But remember, so whenever DHCP, a DHCP packet is a broadcast to this IP address, you have to configure uh, this, the interface, which is receiving the broadcast with IP helper command and specify the IP address where the packet should be sent and forwarded in order for the packet to be received by the recipient and processed accordingly.
This is the end of the presentation. This is Hakim Adish. Thank you for viewing. Bye.